and we're back y'all with another edition of in between the zone i am your boy drizzy dre mr one and only the man of a thousand nicknames of course uh the guy who should the the first rounder <laughs> goofy 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 the first rounder uh, what else you got? Matter of fact, I'm the number one draft me, pick. We gonna keep going? Sounds like a bust to me. That's what it sounds like. Nah, I'm number one like Nelly. Um, <laughs> I am the Black American Dream on IG, Twitter Andre One A Melton, and Facebook Andre Melton. This is the hate, the abominable hater over here. I, not a hate. I'm just. You don't, you don't it, even have I'm your just, stuff together. I'm just Look calling, at you. Don't even know. Don't even, it, know, don't even know your. You don't even know your stuff. No, because I, I don't know. It's a mixture. We need to mix the two for both for you. One day we gotta show the people that I can actually outplay him. No, no. That's fool. Tell the people. Tell the people. Ooh, that's who not you, a thing. Tell the people who you are, cause they already know that the number one draft. Pick, they, they, they probably one. don't. They probably don't. All right, here we go. Crevante Hurry, co-founder of the Flex Zone. C R E V O N C E H U R D E. Facebook, Twitter, and Crevante underscore Hurry on Instagram. And I'm with Goofy. I, I still think you should uh, consider putting Goofy at the end of all your social media. Or at the beginning, that works too. I'm sorry, I I, I, I don't listen to nonsense. Make sure that you comment anyway. on the bottom. <laughs> but I, before you even comment, before we even get into this topic, the number one thing I need you guys to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. Put in the Flex Zone podcast and we are what? The first one. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we need help. We are trying to get to... Uh, 1,000 subscribers. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Then, like our Facebook page, The Flex Zone. Um, Instagram, Twitter, at The Flex Zone 1. If you have any questions, ideas, or possibly want to be a guest, send an email to theflexzone1 at gmail.com. And again, subscribe to that YouTube channel. Just put in The Flex Zone Podcast, and we are... The first one. Number one, just like me. So. Somehow, somehow, <laughs> I, well, I guess, I guess is a is a pretty good segue into our actual topic. But yes, don't get comfortable. Yes. So we want to ask y'all: Should all rookie quarterbacks taken in the first round in the 2018 NFL Draft be starting Week One? Absolutely not. Uh, I mean, well, let's go. I'm gonna go down the list. I, give, give, give me some names. My boy. Who should have been a Jet, but uh, Baker Mayfield. <sighs> nah. I think I think he has the hype. He has obviously has the hype around him, but I don't think I don't think he's ready to take on what the Cleveland Browns is about to offer him. I think he needs some time. <laughs> he needs some time to get some things together. You know what? Because it's the Browns. And if I'm not mistaken, the last guy to Here start for the Browns, who was a rookie, oh boy. is Brady Quinn. So, yeah. Baker Mayfield is hands down better anyway. Baker, do your thing, baby. Go ahead and start for the for the Cleveland Browns. It's the Cleveland Browns. They're, they're garbage anyway, but you going to do your thing. You hear what me? What does that mean? Do your thing? Is his career going to die before it starts? It's Cleveland. But that's what I'm, I'm saying. Scared. Like, give him time. I'm, I'm scared. Don't don't throw him to the wolves right now. You're killing his career. You, his I'm career's scared. gonna last two seasons. I'm, I'm scared. Uh, no, no, you, no. no you, you should. No, be. actually, actually, you know what? I'm so, I'm sorry. I, I took it back to Brady Quinn. But there's another guy. <laughs> Johnny Menzel, baby. Johnny McGoofy. Johnny Menzel. Johnny McGoofy. Johnny Menzel would have been just fine if he didn't go to Cleveland. If he didn't go to Cleveland. Johnny Menzel was not mentally ready to be the starting, anybody's starting quarterback, let alone the Cleveland Browns. So if I do this in college, like, come on. This is all it was. He was rubbing his fingers. That's all he was doing. It wasn't no money there. It was just rubbing his fingers. Just like Johnny, I'm money. It was he? Not, no! Who was Buddy in Cleveland except Baker Mayfield? You go but that's Mayfield. what I'm saying. You put Johnny Mazzola up here when Cleveland, when the Cleveland Browns are down here. When he's not even up here. When he's really down here. First of all. You overhyping it. Is Johnny Mazzola not must What does that mean? He is blockbuster. He, he is, is money. I mean, is so, is, so is so Baker is, Mayfield. So, so am I. You're right. But um, <laughs> Baker Mayfield. I'm about to leave, yo. <laughs> go ahead and leave. <laughs> Look, do, you, do you want me to hit you with anyway, another Anyway, I start, I start, <laughs> I start this, I finish it. But you get on my nerves. I, I tell you. But listen, no. check this out. Um, I'm gonna go down, go down a list of a couple names. Wait, 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 wait. You, you going down the list? No, 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 no. no. This is 
her guys. I'm, okay. I'm talking about like, uh, let's go back. I'm gonna go back as far as back as like Ryan Leaf. Um, Brian Leaf, you you gonna go to back Marcus to Marcus Russell. You gonna go back to the BCS days of I mean, yeah, the BCS days of the NFL, right? Jamarcus Russell, Sam Bradford. These are all. Bradford wasn't too. Mm. He was I. Right. Mm. He was number one overall pick. You want I right as the number one overall pick? Number one. You want <laughs> no. that, that, that's what you want. I mean, but don't get it twisted. He's a finesse. You want to talk about a finesse? How much money is he still is he making? And uh, who, who's, he, who's he with now? The Cardinals. I have no idea. He's finessed the entire NFL and ain't done a dang going thing. I don't understand how Sam Bradford can still get a job, but my man Tebow can't. Can somebody explain that to me, please? I think, I think that was the only one that worked out how it was supposed to. Yes. Because he can't throw. I don't care what you say. Ladies and gentlemen out there, please comment. Let us know what you think. Should all rookie quarterbacks taken in the first Heavens round of no. the 2018 Heavens NFL Heavens draft no. be started week one? Listen, but... Oh, okay. So, if they sit... It has the potential. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers is the best example I can put out there Aaron for somebody. Aaron Rodgers is that, the last example. Nobody's sitting anymore. Anyway, but it's, they, they should go back that way because when you rush it, you're hurting your organization, especially if it doesn't work out. Because if you miss on your number one overall pick, especially a quarterback, you almost put yourself in a hole at least three to five years. But, well, and mean, that's why Cleveland is finally... After so many years, finally somewhat digging themselves out of that ditch that that they put themselves into, it's it just look, it, look. it goes back to the organization not not being patient. I mean, and I'm not, I mean not being patient with nobody. I mean coaches, GMs, quarterbacks. I, I mean the owner the owner would go if he if he didn't own a team. It's yeah. because it's everybody wants it right now. Every time we catch lightning in the bottle, RG three. Um. Car, um, Carson Wentz. Didn't he, he play for the Browns too? <laughs> so, and look, and le, and look, unless you made me miss my point. You made me miss my point. Unless LeBron James is walking through that door, Cleveland, whatever. Like I said, no, it's no. lightning in the bottle. They have great rookie years, and that's what everybody wants. So that's what everybody's going for. Instead of waiting and let them, letting them guys develop like they're supposed to. Well, I think. Well, well, how do you how do you think that Sam Sam um. Darnold is going to do with the Jets. I think he'll do. It's tough because the Jets. I mean, the Try. Jets. I think the Jets will do better than last year. But he's gonna have a, he's gonna have a rough a rough rookie season. And he and don't forget he's in New York. Even though it's all about the G men, but he's still in New York. And he's in the same division as uh, Peyton Man. I mean, that's it. Peyton Man. Ooh, wow. Tom Brady. And so in the New England Patriots. Wow. So uh, it's going it's going to definitely be tough for him. So. I don't expect too much, but maybe a uh, contingent for a wild card. This guy, though, coming up, Josh Allen with the Buffalo Bills. Don't let Jalen Ramsey tell you. He's, he's trash for you. <laughs> he's like, he's trash, there. trash. Um, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair to say that he's trash yet, but it's with the Buffalo Bills. It's like that roster isn't, I don't think it's well put together yet for you for the, to give the keys to a rookie. It's, it's gonna be a bit much. He's gonna struggle. Anybody who goes with the Bills, is gonna man, struggle. that's why you just jumping on organizations, man. And it's funny, is that and it could, both, and you know, this could be an organizational thing. Both, what's funny is both of these organizations weren't they? Uh, weren't Rex, Rex Ryan was coach for both of them, right? And now look at the look at the Bills. At least they were in contention. Now I don't know what the world they about to be. I, I I don't know. It's just some guys that just don't know how to manage manage teams, talent, or positions. And they may be one of those teams. I know for sure, for sure, Cleveland is. Right. I mean, oh, oh, this next team, the Arizona Cardinals. That's your team, ain't it? Ain't that your squad? No, it's not my team. With Josh Rosen? No, it's not my team. It's not my squad. That's what you're doing right now. You're being goofy. No, right? you use, no, no, no. Ladies and gentlemen, if you look at our show Mon every Monday at 10 p.m., The Flex Zone, or if you could just go back a few to the YouTube, just put in The Flex Zone podcast, and we are the first one. You would see <sighs> that Cravante was... said several times on there how he was all in for the Arizona Cardinals. And my gosh, I, the honey badge is I not even here no more. I told you I jumped shit. We, we and it, it happens. I, I jump ship because that's not my number one team. I could do that. Hey, girl, you didn't jump ship. You abandoned that joint. I think the train just still was moving down. And <laughs> no, I didn't get out of there. That thing, that team was, oh, man, was I'm, I'm, had so much potential. You, but you got out of there like the honey badger. 
hey, listen, man. And he really didn't, he didn't want to go. No, he should have wanted to go. No, no. And Larry, you go too. Please, Larry, finish your I mean, yeah, whatever you got else. left, Larry, definitely. Um, if anything. I just said, team. No, just no, man. Especially, now, now how about your boy? I may, I may be jumping a little bit down your list, but Lamar Jackson. No, that, Is he ready right final, now? That's the final one. Um, no. I, 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 right. I, th I thought that Lamar would come in and, you know, I thought maybe halfway through he would be able to be ready to start. But I don't feel like Lamar Jackson is uh, is, is ready after seeing a couple preseason games. I'm like, no, he's, he's not there. Not, he's, he's not there. He's, he's going to be there, but I just don't think he's there. Yeah, you can see the electrifying plays and everything, but what scares me the most is what you said, the accuracy. Yeah, actually, um, it, it, it comes it comes and goes, but it can't you can't just come and go as an NFL quarterback because the windows get tighter. And I think I think your question should be adjusted a little bit. I think maybe top ten the whole first round, nah, definitely definitely not. But I think I think one one thing that can help, and it probably won't ever happen because of the way the NFL is set up now, and they want to win right now with everything. Um, teams are waiting until they absolutely need a quarterback to draft one. I think you guys should have still have your guy. Maybe last he's his slowly declining, but he's still pretty. He's still he's still pretty good. I.e., what they're doing with um, in New Orleans. I think the Saints should get a hop on a quarterback really, really soon because Drew Brees ain't got but what two, maybe at the most three years left at, at, at his level. Drew, Drew Breezy got plenty left in the tank. But I, 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 I don't know. I think I think teams should uh, be more active in grabbing their quarterbacks before they absolutely need them. Again, comment. Let us know what you think. Should all rookie quarterbacks taken in the first round of the 2018 NFL Draft be starting week one? Um, look, I mean, look, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Well, I think y'all be... I, no, I think top actually, actually, you know what? The Baltimore, Baltimore's doing it right with Joe Flacco and Lamar Jackson. But, but I, do you but, see? That's what I'm saying. But, Joe Flacco is still there. Now yeah, you bring dude, a quarterback but, in and let him learn under um, him for whatever, how, however much time Joe Flacco has left in Baltimore. That, but then it's weird because I get what you're saying. But you could have a circumstance with the Packers where you have Brett Favre. And then you had Aaron Rodgers. And Beautiful. you saw Aaron Rodgers kept, kept getting, you know, messed around and kept, you know, de delaying his time. And then if I it. they then the it. then the organization was just like, look, we're done with we're done with Brett Favre. It's all we're gonna it. go into because Aaron of how because of their success now and they have a Super Bowl, it's all worth it. But look at Jimmy G. Right now, the success he's having with the 49ers, he was right there, supposed to be groomed to be the next guy. <sighs> don't, don't and reach for the, the New success. England, and the New England Patriots, they they had to force him out the door. So. But but once again, New England, they had him under they had him under wraps. How long? They had him, what, what three years? Yeah. Three three four three four years something like that. And learning under Tom Brady. Now it's unfortunate that they had to let him go. Bill Belichick didn't want to do it, but. He's looking like he can be, you know, possibly not the next Tom Brady, but I'm saying he has some Tom Brady esque things that comes that comes along with him, and I think the 49ers, uh, in more ways than one, can see that if you check out that contract. I mean, there's some team. I mean, there, there's some players out there who've been first rounders. Um, it could work. It couldn't work. Like you said, Ryan Leaf, the Jamarcus Russells, um, and I named Brady Quinn earlier. Matt Liner. Oh. Mm. And that had so much promise because he went to where? Um, oh, he went to USC. Yeah, yeah, so much promise, so much promise. Johnny Menzel, um, what, Paxton Lynch is out there, and that's um, a recent one. Oh, EJ Manuel. Oh my gosh, he has uh, he had promise because he was at Florida State, uh, and and I believe he came off a championship. David Carr, um, Blaine Dang. Gabbard, oh Kyle Bowler. Your boy, it's your boy. No, he wasn't my boy. That that I, was, I knew what I'm saying. Special. But no, my boy is Tim Tebow though. You know how about that Tebow? It, it happened how it was supposed to. Come on, give me a, give me a Tebow. Get up, get my oh, Tebow. So talk about you see this? Oh, this is your number one pick. You see, this is our number one pick right here. Give me. Now, now, please put put some uh, goofy cards up for Rex Grossman. 
He was the number one pick. Ugh. Yeah, taking tw- <laughs> taking number twenty two, and he went to a championship too. Oh, another one of your uh, he, another guy, Robert Griffin the third, um, Vince Young, Mark Sanchez. I forgot about. But him. Vince Young, Vince Young's issue was he ran into Jeff Fisher. Um, terrible coach, and and also like I said, coaches, GMs, they have they have to be on on one accord. I hate when it's a, a coach. And a GM just came in because they're not on the same page. And it takes time for that. Usually that's why they handcuff GMs and coaches because they they think like when you take away one, it messes up the cohesiveness of the organization. J- Jason Campbell. <sighs> right. He wasn't bad for you guys. He was terrible. But it, well, our, our, team was, our team was pretty bad. This too. is this is for my man AJ. Dante Culpepper. Uh, yeah, Randy Moss though. Jo- Joe Flacco. I mean, we got some uh, some current ones. Alex Smith, your guy right now. Carson Wentz. Well, Carson Palmer. So, out of all those you're naming, what's the percentage that they did well? Uh, they did I bet you it ain't, it ain't 50. I didn't, I didn't name about <laughs> most you of You're going list, down it. And I'm like, no, 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 yes, no, 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 yes. It, it's it, been I, a, I know it's they been, have. It's been, it's been like... One yes, no, 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 no. Like it's exactly just... my point. No, this is not a thing. Don't do it. Do it. Do it the right way. Be patient. It takes time. It takes time to be but... great. Everybody thinks they're gonna get greatness. It doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes you know there's rare occasions you get lightning in the bottle, but that's not the norm. That doesn't that doesn't well, happen mean, all the well, time. I mean, we've had good rookie seasons. I, uh, Joe Flacco. Matt Ryan, they had good Andrew Luck. Seasons. Andrew Luck had a yes. uh, really good uh, uh, season. RG three had a good rookie season. Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota. I mean, it's been uh, what Eli Manning, Philip Rivers. I mean, the, some people have panned out. Some, some. Uh, I need majority. But, <laughs> if I mean, you want to talk the, about to the, start but, week one. But the issue is with a with a league that's so microwave now. That's what I'm saying. That you want instant success instead of waiting, and and it's not only just the organization; it's the fans. No long people don't no longer want to wait and progress for things to happen naturally as they should. They want it wins right away. And is you that want good? Instant success. And is that good? No, I, I'm, I'm with it's you. It's terrible. Because, You're destroying you guys' because, careers. I mean, because look, look at RG3, for example. I mean, he had a tremendous promise Absolutely, for his career. Absolutely, sure did. And then when he got hurt, it's just been downhill ever since. You know what I'm saying? So, but see, the young guys also got to take care of themselves. But first things first, first things mm-hmm. first, the organization has to take care of them. Yes. So, again, let us know what you think. Should all rookie quarterbacks taken in the first round in the 2018 NFL Draft be starting week one? The list again, one more time, ladies and gentlemen, was Baker Mayfield and Cleveland taken at one. Sam Darnold taken at number three with the New York Jets. Josh Allen taken at number seven with the Buffalo Bills. Josh Rosen taken at number 10 with the Arizona Cardinals. And Lamar Jackson taken at number 32 with the Baltimore Ravens. We want to know what you guys think. Continue to comment. And then, right, but right now we're going to take a quick break. On the other side, we got more for you. This is In Between the Zone here. Stay tuned. Hey guys, this is Crivante Heard here. I am the senior producer and co-founder of the Flex Zone. Follow me, Crivante Heard, at C R E V O N T E H U R D E. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Crivante underscore Heard. I am the voice of reason on the show. I point out all goofiness when I see it, and trust me, there is a lot of it. Check us out. Hey, that right. Come get on, out man. Of here, get out of here. That's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. The goofiness. There it goes. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. If you heard some of the conversations off air, Goofiness. you would be, you would totally laugh. Miss, a new nickname for me is "Pass Me the Damn Ball," Mister Pass Me the Damn Ball, aka Tio. Oh no! I, actually, you know what? That's a compliment, good brother. I, Tell the people how they can find you. That's the first. They can find me. Get out of here, first of all. Crivante Heard, C R E V O N T E H U R D E. Facebook and Twitter, Crivante underscore Heard on Instagram. Enough about him. So about me. Uh, Mr. Pass Me the Damn Ball. 
You can find me on IG, the Black American Dream. Yes, I am Black American Dream, as you can see the lower third right here. Uh, Twitter, Andre 1A Melton. And Facebook, there. Andre Melton. Of course, it's there. It's not there. It's, it's there. Okay. They're here for the Friday Night we'll Delight. We'll bet. T tell me if it's there, guys. In the comments, tell me if it's there. Man, this isn't about you, man. <laughs> oh, fuck. It's, a, it's, a, if that, it's about that, me. That's you know right. What? You got but, that right. You know what? But it, even then, more so about me. It's about the flex zone. Yes, the flex zone. Make sure that you go to our YouTube channel. We're trying to, the first goal is to get to 200 subscribers. Make sure that you get there. Put in the flex zone podcast and we are the first one. Yes, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Then like our page, the flex zone. Instagram. Twitter at the Flex Zone One. If you have any questions, ideas, or possibly want to be a guest, send an email to the Flex Zone One at gmail.com. Look, we're going to conclude the show, get into the last topic. Um, I was browsing through online and learned that Serena Williams had learned that her sister was killed 10 minutes before what she says was her worst career match. So we're asking the question should we tell athletes bad news? During gameplay or wait until after the gameplay to tell them the, that bad news? So, okay, so the question is, is either during or after, right? Yes. I think it's a terrible idea to do it during because we don't know how each individual is going to act or take, you know, take the, uh, the information. Because um, it could go really, really, really bad and it could be an even bigger story. And it could be, you know how the media flips things. It could be flipped a mm -hmm. totally negative way. And then the story will come out afterwards. But it will still, that negative will still stand. If you know what I'm saying. Um, I think always, once a person is done doing their doing their job, then, I'm well, there's no perfect time to tell anybody any type of bad information. But I think it will be better to do it at the end after their work is done then she can properly you know grieve and do all the do all the, the go through that process the grieve process as opposed to starting during a match say or a game or a series I mean well I mean I, I agree with you I think that people should always wait well you're not gonna be goofy this segment first of all I'm never goofy man but um, I, I do really I'm just saying you don't want these hands I'm saying that all right T.O. Um, more like Floyd if I'm gonna give you some hands oh gosh. but um, I don't I don't think you sh I, I think you should wait until afterwards because like you said you just you want that that athlete to focus on their craft so that way they can get into their zone and bring out the best of themselves um, and so I, I totally agree with that um, the loss that Serena did have was in Wimbledon to Great Britain's Johanna um, Conta. Hopefully, I'm saying her name right. You're uh, probably not. Probably because you're goofy. You're probably not. You just just couldn't let me. Of course not. Because okay. you've been trying to live your best life the whole time. Nah, um, shut down. She she lost six six one and six zero oh in that in that matchup. Um, she learned the news of. A, um, a a guy who killed her, um, her sister, her half sister, um, and it was back in 2003, and she learned the news um, like it was 10 minutes before her match in Wimbledon. Terrible, terrible, terrible timing. Um, yeah, because obviously once you get that information, you're not focused anymore. The whatever your like you're saying, your craft, your job is not important anymore. That's not the first thing in your mind. So. Um, how, dang, how do you learn you, that before? Like, and it was ten minutes before she was set to to take to take the um yeah, to get a, the, the match, right? Um, so how do you, how do you tell somebody that? But I mean, so and that's that's maybe a reason too. Like, you just stay away from social media. Mm -hmm. Don't have because because there's in. multiple ways to find out. Like you yeah, know, just tune all that tune all that noise out, so that way you can just focus in on what you need to focus in on. Exactly, and you're breaking focus. So, yeah. I mean, before, during, it's a terrible, absolutely a terrible idea. However, there can be um, a time when athletes do know about 
bad news and it makes them perform at an even higher level. True. That's uh, true. I mean, look at somebody like Brett Favre when he, on the Monday Night Football game that he had mm-hmm. when he threw it for the four touchdowns. Was that his, was that his wife? Was that, was that? It was his wife. Okay. That was from his wife. Okay. Yeah. Found out. Um, she had, um, she had a disease. Okay. She definitely had cancer. Okay. Um, like I said, it depends on, depends on the person. Some people may take it and use it as motivation to do better. Some people shut down, break down, can't focus. You know, every, everybody's different. And mental health is definitely, is definitely a big thing, especially, you know, in sports, because they say most sports are, you know, 90% mental. As opposed to physical, I know at least in football that is, and I it's probably like that across the board in all sports. So when you give somebody that type of information, the mental health is is going to become a factor in how they go about playing their respective sport. Again, chime in, ladies and gentlemen. Let us know what you think. Should we tell athletes bad news or wait until afterwards to tell them the bad news? Yes, I'm, I don't think it's even close. Definitely, yeah, I think it's best for everybody to wait after. No, but I mean, you, you never know. Some people could, like you said, some people could use it as motivation and then go out and maybe perform at an even better level because you're you're more motivated. Or some people could have a, a uh, some people could just not do as, as good as they wanted to do because their mind is elsewhere. So. I think, I think the risk, I think the risk is higher than, than the reward, mm-hmm. the, reward the reward in this situation. I mean, we have now. I don't. I don't remember the time frame. Um, with I well, because we got we have Isaiah Thomas. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I can't remember the time frame. I think he found out like a day or so before the game, and he performed phenomenally for that. No, the for the playoff that, game for that, that for that uh, for the playoff game he had. But I'm, I, I I could I couldn't risk it if I had the information. I there's no way uh, because like I said, the risk risk greater than than a uh, reward. I mean, what about uh, Jordan as well? You know that, but well, Jordan it caused him to he, play baseball. It, go, that, that, it caused know. it caused him prime years mm-hmm. um, into you know playing baseball, leaving the game of basketball and playing playing baseball, which he didn't do his best didn't do his best work. But yeah, he caused him he caused him some prime years. I mean, he did at least at least he tried the sport of baseball for his father. Though. So oh yeah, yeah, that, that is true. But then, like you said, he he, he end up losing some prime years in basketball because I mean he six he six peed it two three peats. But who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Those with those well a, a year and a half because he came back you know yeah. in ninety four. But things didn't <laughs> things didn't end too well. But that's what happens when you leave when you leave the sport for a year and a half. So. so. Mm. Again, y'all let us know. You chime in. We are always curious to see what you guys think. Should we tell athletes bad news or wait to tell them afterwards? Oh, it's not even close. It's not even close. But I'm curious to see what the uh, what our people, what our viewers have to say. Yes. And again, with our viewers, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just put in the Flex Zone podcast, and we are the first one. Twitter, Instagram at the Flex Zone One. Facebook, like our page, The Flex Zone. If you have any questions, ideas, or possibly want to be a guest, send an email to theflexzone1 at gmail.com. Most importantly, we want to get those subscribers up. Right now, we're close to 200. And the overall goal, of course, is to get to 1,000 and even more. But just make sure you subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to that YouTube channel. Just put in The Flex Zone Podcast. The first one. Move your elbows, man. Oh, my gosh. Well... I am the Black American Dream on Goofy. IG. There you go. I know you ain't talking with your long name. Nobody even does anybody even know how to spell your name? Uh, they should by now. I Matter of fact, have a contest coming soon. Can you spell my name? I'm not gonna say it next episode. We brothers, and I can't even spell your name. It's <laughs> just so, terrible because you don't listen. It's all about you. That's why. That's your uh, issue. That's your problem. Um, that's your problem. Look at me. Of course, this should be all about me. There it goes. There it goes. Guys. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. All right. There it goes right there. There it goes. Uh, Where's Byron when you need him? Because nobody of, found because you're not about to have your your personal flavor flave to help you with this situation. Nah, nah, this is all you right here, Goofy. Nah, you're too slow, Floyd. Goofy. <laughs> out here. Do a Daniel Bryan. <laughs> I don't know what that means. You know what it means. I don't know what that means. You know what it means. 
We're going to get you to watch wrestling before it's all said and done. We're going to get you to watch some WWE. But in the words of Byron, we gone. Peace. Peace. Get them. Come on, man.